John chapter 1, starting at verse 43. The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You shall see greater things than that. He then added, I tell you the truth. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. I've got up the title, Have You Found What You're Looking For? You may recall that once I told you that I had lost something. Not important, not important really, but I lost something. What was it? It was a couple of railway history books. Well, I did find them and I did rejoice. Uh, didn't hold a party, like the, uh, but and uh, they were in an area I had looked before, but obviously I've not looked diligently enough. They were beside my bed. <laughs> what do you watch on TV? It's surprising what you uh, you end up watching sometimes. But uh, what I, I watch is uh, Aussie Gold Hunters. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, you've got some characters out in Australia who search for, for gold, as the oh, title okay. suggests. They spend all day with their metal detectors scanning the ground. Usually out in the bush, hot temperatures, flies and dust everywhere. And every now and then they will get a signal, a bleep, the target has been found. I've got another. <laughs> and, they get the, and they get their handheld pick out, scrape the ground, and then pick up handfuls of the dirt, wave it under the detector to see if uh, which handful has got, there, got something in it. <laughs> sometimes it's just a bottle top, but sometimes it is gold. Something so small that if you sneezed, it would just uh, I mean, put it in the hand. If you sneezed, it would just blow away. Tiny little bits of gold, a few grams. But sometimes it's a little bit bigger and the emotions that brings you see the excitement and joy in their faces. They can't, well often they're working pairs and they have to call the other one over, they are so excited. But I've not seen any one of them say, I've really found what I'm looking for, I'm going to retire. No, they've got the bug. They think to themselves, what if that next find is even bigger? There are other pro similar programs out there, but have you found what you're looking for? There's a secular rock music group whose album has just been voted by Radio 2 listeners the best album of the 1980s. Band called U2. Now you may wonder why I've said that, but there's a track, a song on that album with the title or its theme, hook line, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. The lyrics go that they've done this, they've done that, experienced this, experienced that, but conclude, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. What did it say in our, our reading? Philip says to Nathaniel, 
we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus, come and see. Have you found what you are looking for? Now apologies if I repeat anything that Roger mentioned or told us last week about Philip or Nathaniel. But have you found who or what you are looking for? Of course you have to look in the right place and you have to look where to find it. So let's just go over the story again and apologies if there's a little bit of dramatic effect all in. So Nathaniel is under a tree. Well, I guess he's in the shade of a tree, escaping the hot sun. I always thought he was, he was there sitting under a tree. It doesn't actually say that there, but uh, there you go. His friend Philip approaches with a huge smile on his face. Come and see, come and see Nathaniel. We have found him. Come and see for yourself. Hold on a minute. Where did you say they came from? From Nazareth? Are you sure? No, come and see. And as they approach, this person sums up your character by saying out loud, Here is a true Israelite in whom there is nothing false. Nathaniel says, How do you know me? I saw you under the fig tree even before Philip spoke to you. This Jesus is really someone special. He is the one. Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Nathaniel, you believe, yes, but there's more to come. You'll see God in action. So with Nathaniel and Philip, of course, uh, well, Nathaniel was otherwise known as Bartholomew in the other Gospels. He did believe. He did follow. He did become one of Jesus' twelve disciples and no doubt saw and experienced just what Jesus said he would. Jesus, no, sorry, Nathaniel found who he was looking for. It was Jesus. And I suppose one could say that Jesus found who he was looking for. Nathaniel. So the question is, have you found Jesus? This is what Hebrews 1 verse 3 says of Jesus. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Have you found Jesus? But let's look again. Let's, who was this Nathaniel? What was his character? What do we read? Here is a true Israelite in whom is nothing false. I suppose it was a fact. He was a true Israelite. Doesn't exactly tell us what that means. Us. But perhaps he could trace his ancestry right back to Jacob and thus Abraham. Perhaps he took comfort in and saw the God of Israel. Perhaps he was someone who looked to God to fulfil his word, to fulfil his promises. Perhaps he was waiting, expecting God to act, to send the Messiah as promised long ago. In whom is nothing false? Or if you're more familiar with the AV or authorised version translation, in whom is no guile. 
There was no pretense in him. Not like with a, a Pharisee of the day, as Jesus would discuss them at times. There was no act. He didn't at all. He did not put on an act. He was true. I looked up the word guile and it said the ability to deceive or trick, craftiness or cunning. That's a strange way of describing someone in whom is no guile, but and perhaps as you look at study people, perhaps you know a few people who are what you would then describe as being guile. Guile is, I find, not an NIV word in this translation. It didn't seem to be used to translate the original Hebrew or Greek word that the AV translations did. But the words they, they use instead do describe the thought of being guile. They use the word deceit, speaking lies, deceitful speech, or trickery. So I think from all that we could conclude that Nathaniel was of good character, it was good, honest, truthful character. Could Jesus say of you and me, he or she is a true Christian in whom is no God? But did he have, this is Nathaniel, have what might be described as institutional prejudice? To paraphrase, he said, does any good thing come out of Nazareth? And uh, you may have used that phrase yourself in a in similar sort of situation. If you want to find out something about someone, or perhaps um, now I would say form a prejudiced view of someone, you might ask them what secondary school they went to. If they said they went to one of our local grammar schools, uh, you might think differently of them than if they said they went to a Chase School. I went to a former version of Chase School myself, when it was um, Fairfax High School for boys, but I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say there. We are prejudiced and sometimes when we shouldn't be. Think um, that point there. There's a case where Timothy, young Timothy, I think he was, got sent to a church and Paul said, Don't let that put you off him. Or well, that's my words and paraphrasing again. But uh, don't be prejudiced against him just because of what we see. And again, we've been studying the Beatitudes and the thinking and approach and lessons for us through them. Nathaniel, he was seeking, looking, waiting, expecting God to keep his word, that written down by Moses and the prophets in scripture, that God would send a redeemer, a great shepherd, that he would enact. Do you hold on to what God has said? Do you look and wait for the return of the Son of God? Do you live the life you should while you wait expecting? What about Nathaniel's insight? From his encounter in both what he knew and understood, what he saw and what he heard caused him to proclaim Jesus as rabbi or teacher. You are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. All very true. His intelligence and spiritual education is part, his true part of the Godhead. His majesty and authority. How did John the Baptist describe Jesus 
When he first saw him, what do you find then in verse 29? Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Nathaniel still had more to, uh, more to, to be taught, to understand and to see and hear, to fully get who Jesus was as rabbi, as the teacher, as the son of God, the king of Israel. What was that title or that plaque that was put over the top of the cross? Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. How are you in your spiritual life? Still learning? Still understanding? Still faithful? What was the fact told? You will see greater things than, than, the, than that. The miracles. Water into wine. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who had leprosy cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Nathaniel would have witnessed the good news being preached to the poor by Jesus, and the change Jesus brought or had on people's lives as well as his own. Jesus said, you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. And I'm sure he did. I can't see that this is recorded for us as such in the Bible. You may remember from the early stories in the Old Testament of a man called Jacob. He was out in the wilds one or found himself out in the wild, so he, he went to sleep using a stone for a pillow. So I'm not sure he had a very comfortable night's sleep, but it says he had a dream of a stairway, of a ladder going from earth to heaven, with angels ascending and descending, with the Lord above it who spoke to him. And the angels descending and descending was a natural Occurrence, occurrence. Jacob, when he woke, concluded this is other, none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So he named the place Bethel. What about Nathaniel? Well, do you remember when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness? The devil came along and put three situations to him. One was that if uh, Jesus uh, was stand, could do the spectacular. If he stood on top of the temple and jumped off, it says that God would send angels to uh, uh, pick him up or stop him from falling. Well, that didn't happen, so it's not something that Nathaniel would ever have seen because that's not how Jesus operated. Again, after the devil left, him from tempting him in the wilderness, it says, and the angels came and attended to him. Well, that was before the event of our, our reading. Of course, Jesus was alone in the wilderness. There was a time in the Garden of Gethsemane. Luke's record is that when Jesus was in quite a state of anxiety about all that was going to happen, it says, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. But that's not something that Nathaniel saw. Because if you remember, it says the disciples couldn't keep their eyes open and they slept all during those events. There are a few records of people who did see or saw heaven open. Remember the first Christian martyr, Stephen? It says, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God 
and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Jesus even told the Jewish leaders at his trial with them before they handed him over to Pilate, but I say, all of you in the future will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. I did come across this in my studies. The last verse of Hebrews 1 says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Nathaniel would know Jesus, the Son of Man, dying, dying for sin, not his own, but for the sins of the world. The Apostle, also, sorry, the Peter, the Apostle, writes in his letter, and there I start with the verse where he's quoting from Isaiah 53. He committed, no, talking of Jesus, he, Jesus, committed no sin. No deceit was found in his mouth. Or as the authorised version translates it from Peter, no guile was found in his mouth. Peter goes on, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he trusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that's the cross, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. The Nathaniel saw the risen Lord. Remember that incident again up in Galilee? And some of the disciples went out in a boat fishing, well, trying to fish, in the list of them is Nathaniel. And he would have heard that cry and experienced for himself, it is the Lord. The call is still the same, come and see, come and see Jesus. No man ever spake like this man. Many come just to see a man, as also. Many come just to see a man. Yes, a good man, a kind man. As it were, they just see Jesus as Jesus of Nazareth. Some come and see a rabbi, a teacher. Yes, he's got good ethics, good morals. Live the life of serving others. But some come and see and find Jesus, the Son of Man, their Saviour, and know him as the Son of God in his majesty, the Lord Jesus Christ. Come and see. Look in the right place. So I ask again, have you found who you are looking for? I'll leave you with this. It comes from Hebrews 12, verses 22 onwards. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the, to, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do, do not refuse him who speaks. Now may the grace, peace and blessing of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with us now and for always. Amen. Amen.